And if you look closely at it here, I tried to... I did mention to the owner that... Uh... Well, started working on this thing. Uh, buddy came over, we dived into it. He just wanted to tear it apart and see what parts he needed, even though there's no snow here anymore because it's nice and sunny out now. But uh, yeah, it's uh, looking pretty rough. So we'll start over here with the parts. So here's all the bits and pieces of the chain case. You got the case, you got the, the main drive chain, have your reverse chain, you have your main drive gears. And then these are your reverse gears. So this guy down on the bottom. And yeah, it would run off of that. So it is not looking good at all. So here's the, with the chain ride. So this is your reverse gear chain. First of all, it's looking pretty rough. And I'm pretty sure the case hardens come right off of this gear. It's it's bad. This, this whole chain case made uh, made metal. Pretty nasty looking, but that's not even the worst of it. So here's the reverse engagement. So you see it's got these angled teeth. And yeah, there's lots lots of stuff went through here. There's bits missing there, but it gets even worse. Here's the other mesh gear. It's uh, missing a whole bunch of teeth. So when you want to back up in this and you're stuck, don't put it in reverse and pin it because you wipe all the teeth off of this. So this gear here, would engage this way into this gear and you can do it while you're they say you can do it while you're moving I wouldn't suggest it but that's why these teeth are angled these look like engagement teeth off a transmission off a manual transmission but yeah that's pretty bad <laughs> like almost all the teeth are wiped right off I'm trying to get me get him to give me a video of uh, I think he had his, his GoPro going when this happened then your other other gear here, all pretty much everything is toast. Like there's chunks missing out of these gears. So when these teeth got wiped off, it just went through the whole system. All the all the gears look like that. Even like the main drive gears aren't looking too good. Just wiped right clean right off of there. Yeah, and the, even the chains. Well, here's the inspection window, the window that was missing. That's where you knew something was wrong. The inspection window goes right here. And this is just so when you before you go right, you can see if it's got oil in it. Because your oil oil level will be about right here. And it should be halfway into that sight glass. But yeah, sight glass just got annihilated. It's supposed to be glass and it's just missing a bunch of chunks. But the case, like the case is even in pretty bad shape. You can see all the bits and pieces. And you know, being uh, pot metal aluminum, which I am, I'm kind of assuming this is, it can't take a lot of abuse and you can see where the gear was rubbing here and yeah the teeth coming apart was pretty bad this is pretty nasty but it gets even worse so when we come around here and we look at the the case the, the case side or the the, uh, the sled side and we look right down in here you see this right here it blew out the bottom of this part of the case it's pretty bad and like all the little bits and pieces and all that just kind of like fell out Let's see if I can get some teeth Should be able to pick up a couple teeth. Yeah. Oh, there's one right there. Let's see if I can grab that again So here's one of the teeth off of that uh, gear You see it's got the little point on it the point definition on the tooth Yeah, it just went kind of went through everything. Um, he's incredibly lucky though because the dry shaft here for the drivers for the track is uh, is actually in fairly decent shape and didn't chew up any of the uh, any of the splines on here and even the jack shaft the jack shaft is looking pretty good here too so I mean there's a bit of discoloration but it is a fairly older machine it uh, it looks a lot worse on camera than it actually is it's it can be reusable but yeah that's where we stand with this so he's waiting on parts. I think he said he got an order. I think he used about, what, 18 to two grand, I think, for all these parts. Yeah, this is why I can't own a new sled, because I would just destroy it. But yeah, on the upside, I have all the parts and pieces for the KX. Time to put her back together. 
forgot to show this too, but uh, both chains are shot as well. These, uh, if you look down there and you look in the teeth, I'm trying to get out of the camera view, but a lot of the teeth and the chain down here are pretty chewed up. I think a lot of them pieces, a lot of the pieces of those ears went through there. Let's see if I got, oh yeah, right there. See, it's all bungered up. So, oh, there's another spot there. Yeah, I like both these chains look exactly the same. I mean, the reverse chain looks a little bit better than that, but yeah. There's one for the wall, man. Make a necklace out of this as to why you shouldn't do certain things. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. So, I got her almost ready to go back together. I like to use a bit of sealer. So, for this one here, I, I couldn't find, we couldn't find what I usually use. So, we got a bit of Honda Bond. I personally will only put it on one half of the case because these are machine surfaces and the more of the stuff you put on there the more it's going to squish out and yeah gross. Um, I was able to get the crank in the crank just fell into place. I didn't have to hammer or bang or anything on that. Same with the bearings, all this stuff is in. So here we go, let's put, her, let's put the case house together. And yes, before I'm going to put this together, right before I put it together I come along here and I wiped all the surfaces off here. A little, little bit of brake clean. So let's slap her back on there. It, my fingers in this stuff. Where can I be where I'm not in the way of the camera? Okay, here we go. And let's check and make sure everything looks good. Yeah. And we can drop the case off back on. Yeah, just like that. I'll go on the dowels. Just like that. Simple. Simple as that. Now we throw some bolts in her. Bag of bolts. Zap it up. So I'm only gonna snug these down. I'm not gonna torque. We're not gonna put any mustard on it at all. We're just gonna set them in. And I'm gonna go around here. Kind of in a crisscross pattern here. Yes, you can. You probably can't even see what I'm doing here. There's my awesome camera skills. Okay, we're gonna set this baby up. Oh, there you go. Zach, can you see that now? Oh, yeah. Up here. I gotta say, thanks. I can't remember what your name was. I was reading my comments. Awesome content. Thanks, man. I love it. Even though I think my content is stupid. <laughs> and I still love that people are actually watching my videos. But yeah. Okay, so like I said, we're just gonna snug it. We're not gonna go tight. So I got one that's too long to bring the wrong spot. So I thought these are all the same size. Are they not all the same size? They are not all the same size. Okay, so I'm just gonna go up here. No. Okay. I need to find out which one have I got ooh, in the wrong spot. Oh, probably that guy right there. That's a shorty. And then that should go there. I found her. 
No, I didn't. Okay, what's going on here? Where did this one go? The one that's long, the one that's long, the one that's long. Where the heck would I put that one? Okay, bonehead. I gotta figure out what I did wrong here. I gotta figure out what I did wrong. All right, I found it. That was a pain in the butt. Long one goes here. Okay, so, torque. Uh, probably about eight to 10 uh, foot pounds, so like 70, 80 inch pounds. Let's see if I can find my little torque wrench. So I got my old torque wrench. So let's go to, let's just put her at 10. So there's five. Is that 10? Yeah. Zero. That's 10. 10 foot pounds. Now remember, these are 8 millimeter. They're pretty tiny. You don't want to be over torquing this stuff. It doesn't It doesn't have to be He-Man tight. Just snug. Right? Or right. I guess you should torque it. But I'm not one for like torquing stuff. I just usually put it on there and set it up and away you go. Right? Um, you shouldn't have to come back and retorque engine case. I have had to do it before. I'm just gonna go around nice and easy. Just gonna go in a bit of a crisscross pattern here. Kind of. You don't want to do around the circle. You want to draw it in evenly. seem like a whole lot of torque on here. I think I'm gonna have to look in the book here. That is not very tight at all. Unless my uh, torque wrench is kind of bunged. This is a uh, oh, Princess Auto Special. That's uh, for Canada. For you guys down in the States, that would be Harbor Freight. Same sort of stuff. Okay, I gotta look in the book here. All right, I don't know how well this is gonna pick up, but I'm look. I found the book. <laughs> the book. Okay, so crankcase bolts. We're gonna go across here. Crankcase bolts are 78 inch pounds. So I have no idea what 78 inch pounds means. So we're gonna go foot pounds to inch. Pounds, foot pounds to inch. Okay, one foot pound. Okay, so we're gonna put in convert in from in to foot pounds. So it was seventy eight inch pounds. Is oh six point five foot pounds. So I went a little bit over on this, but <clears throat> maybe a little more. We'll go. We'll go thirteen because I don't want to have to come back and take this apart again. No. No, we're not going that tight. Back her off here a bit. We'll go back to the 10. Remember, tiny little eight millimeter bolts going into an aluminum case. If you strip one of these out, you're gonna have a bad day. It's all good. Okay, so now we're going to work on the clutch side. 
get this side all back together. So, first thing we're going to put in there is the crank drive gear. I don't know if you can see. It does have some uh, grooving in it, but it's not it's not a rough grooving. Like it catches my finger, but uh, I think it should be okay. Um, this is a double lip seal, so that should make it. Um, I don't know what the heck I'm talking about. Should make it good, better than just your normal. And I like to put a little bit of lube on there. Back to my toothbrush. I keep these. So I'm gonna put that on there. We're gonna. Actually, what we need to do is find the key for that. There's the keyway. Goes in the crank. Like so. Hmm. My least favorite job is putting these keys in because some go in nice and some you can't get in at all. Ah, just like that. Okay. So then, drive gear goes on. Rod key. Got to seat that key in there. So I got to get a uh, hammer. Hammer and a little punch. I'm just going to seat that key down in there. Like that. And this should just slide right in there. A little bit of oil on that. Right, there we go. A little bit of oil on that gear. We'll get her to slide right in there. Make sure you're not eating your seal when you're putting that in. And just like that, she's in place. Get it bottomed out. Washer. Nut. So why wait till the end to torque this up? Until you see get the clutch basket on there. Okay, so what are we doing next here? I'm just gonna tighten this up just a little bit here. Okay, so next I want to put on the shift components. So this guy here, if I remember correctly, goes around like that. It's around like so. And it should lock into place like that. Okay. Like that. Right. Remember, big torque is not required in these engines. Just nice, nice and gentle, nice and easy. Okay, guys, in now we need the shift shaft. I got to be a little more prepared. <laughs> okay, so the shift shaft, this baby right here. So this guy is what actuates your shifting. Huh. Should probably do this in front of the camera, huh? I gave it a shake. Oh, there we go. This stuff is falling out. Okay. So just like everything else, I'm gonna put a little dab of oil on it. So when it goes in there, it doesn't wreck the new seal. That's on the other side. Ah, it's gonna go in right here. I need to take the gear off of here. And then this guy 
I should slide right through that new seal on the other side. There we go. And she's locked into place just like that. Oh, that's popping out. Okay, I gotta set this up like that now. Okay. So that guy's in there. We can put the other gear back on. Can you even see? <laughs> Maybe I'll bring it down a bit. Going down. Okay. Getting closer. So, the next thing I want to do is I want to put in the kicker gear. So this is the kicker gear. So when this machine originally got dropped off, it uh, I couldn't kick it over. So this is the kicker gear. So we're gonna put the kicker gear in place. Right here. And then uh, this comes around. So this looks like a threaded hole, but it's not a threaded hole. That is for the spring. Oh, what happened there? Right. Went too far. Hang on. I gotta pull that back out of here and see what's going on here. Okay. Still good. So that, yeah, if you look right here, this little tab, there's a plate right here. The tab is gonna go in there and it's gonna lock in behind that. So it's gotta go in that way. And we take her like so. And we lock her into place like that. And then if you're ever curious, and if that's going to work or not, I'm going to get your kicker. And I'm just going to put the kicker on there. So if you put it together right, it should turn stuff and then click. Alright. Looks good to me. It's also set to where if the engine's running, it's going to go, it can go, it can go backwards if the engine's running. Alright. Alright. Kick your gears on. Um, clutch basket. Here's a clutch basket. Now this basket's not it's not the worst I've ever seen, but you see the fingers here and you see the grooves that the clutch plates have put in there. This can cause poor clutch release. It can feel like the clutch is slipping. Um, you're better off to replace the basket, but I mean this basket, this gear is pretty tight on that basket. Um, I would say I'd run it and then if it started to do weird stuff then replace it then but uh, yeah it's looking pretty good everything looking good so I'm gonna take a bit of some oil and put the oil on that and this goes like that right so then you have a sleeve so you're gonna oil the sleeve it's gonna go on the shaft oil the sleeve sleeve goes over then there's a bearing that runs on that sleeve. Oil that bearing. Oh, I should mention too, the oil that you're using to assemble should be the oil that you're gonna run in the chain case. Chain case. My brain is on snowmobile, in the transmission case, not the chain case. Uh, actually, there should be one more of those little bearings. Now we do the old part search. And through the power of video, I found it. But it never got cleaned, so you have to give me a minute to clean her up. It's all cleaned up. A little bit of oil on there. Get them bearings all pre-oiled. Slides on there. Okay. Then the clutch basket should just slide right on there. And then that's yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. So now we put the clutch on next. It's always recommended that you soak your clutch fibers. So this has been soaking for a couple days. And once again, the same oil that you're gonna use. But we gotta put that basket back together. Okay, what am I gonna do here? I gotta put this up. Put this 
How about this? We can lean her back without stuff popping out. Okay. So, what goes first? We are going to put a washer first. Then we are going to put the base. Mm, that doesn't look right. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to do this a little differently than I usually do. We are going to do this kind of backwards. So when you put your friction on there, you have your friction and then you have your seals. So these are the steels. So you're gonna go, you're gonna start with a with a fiber and you're gonna end with a fiber. So we're gonna go. We're gonna go one fiber. Okay. One steel. Oh. Something you should look at too. Some of these have a sharp edge, and some of these have a rounded edge. I think I had these all set up the right way. Yeah. Put them all one way. There's a steel. Here's a fiber. Here's a steel. Here's a fiber. Bonehead. Fiber. Steel. Fiber. Steel, fiber, steel, fiber, steel, fiber, steel. So you know you didn't screw up if you end up with a fiber. Like that. Okay, so that is something we're going to line the fingers up here so it slides on the basket nicely okay, and then we're going to put the backer on there load her up with some oil the backer on there okay then we're going to try to slide this and try to slide this oh, i gotta somehow figure out how to move the camera here so getting everything all boily. And we're gonna take this whole unit here and we're gonna slide her right onto here. See how well this turns out. Uh oh. <laughs> well crap. I kinda want this to stay on here. <laughs> okay, maybe that's not the way to do it. Oh, that's that's going okay. It's going. And these Kawasaki's do some interesting things. So, turn that off, maybe. Okay, what is going on here? I'm doing this. I'm gonna do this the other way. See if I can uh, at least get half of these on here. So much for doing it differently, hey? Right? Because that uh, you know that's always it always works, right? Not. Well, what's going on here? Okay, here we go. I'm gonna steal. No fab. What happens when I try to do something out of my normal, out of my norm? Fiber. Ah, oh, that's way better. That's going together way better. Now I got to line up all the all the teeth here for the fibers, or for the not the fibers but the steels. So I've got them all lined up here. Let's see if we can put the clutch boss in there without having any issues here. Oh, what's going on here? Okay, I don't like these clutches. 
Ah, there we go. Ooh, one more. Gotta get her in there one more time. One more forever. One more steal. Oh, jeez. Stuff all over my fingers. Okay. Ha ha ha! You are on there. No, you're not. Why is there that big gap? That's not good. All right, screw something up. Gotta take her apart. All right, I got it figured out. Didn't do anything wrong. It was together the right way. So I can in there, and then I need the nut. Am I ever not prepared for these videos? <laughs> okay, got it. Got D nut. So let's see how big that body is. Bigger than that. Bigger than that. This is always the fun part, trying to hold this stuff and tighten her up. <clears throat> ah, my fingers. So this is a special kind of a nut. As you can see, it's been staked. So you don't have to overdo it here. And then we'll just stake her back into place. I think if you go too tight on this, you're going to start to deform your clutch boss. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to call that good. I'm going to get a punch and we're going to stake that nut down. I got a punch. I'm just going to come over here to where there's a slot without uh, damaging anything here. We're just going to give her a nice little tap. Like that. That's all it takes. Nut is installed. Now we have to put the pressure plate on. Which is this guy here. Put some springs in there. So we're going to put the springs on the boss. Generally when you buy a new clutch too, you should always put these springs in there. We're going to put... Ooh. Oh no! Well i got to pick that up. Hey! Thank God for the long magnets. I'm just gonna go in there. And where's this guy gonna go? Yeah, she's gonna go on here like so. And then these guys are gonna go on there like that. And we tighten these guys up. Oh. Alright, gotta take the gloves off. Can't do the gloves. Can't feel anything. Okay, you know what? I did something wrong here. This is this is all backwards. Like that goes in there like that. <laughs> keep thinking, you know, like this stuff is also backwards to what I'm used to. 
I have never done a Kawasaki before. I've done Yamahas, I've done Hondas. I did a, uh, what the heck was the other one? Uh, the heck was that? A TRX or something like that? Now, just like everything else, take it easy and be gentle. Because it doesn't take much to break one of the fingers off of the clutch boss. And we want to go in a crisscross pattern. Yeah, I think whoever put this together last time lost the washers that were on those. Should be some washers on these. There's a better place to put the camera. So just like a clutch on a car, right? you want to draw them in evenly. You don't want to go to town on just one. Some things I like to do by hand, some things I like using the gun. This is one of those things I like doing by hand. Something is not right here. How was that? Disengage the clutch. Oh well, because it pulled in the center. It pushes on there. Mm. Okay, she's all on there. So I was actually curious. I wondered if I had this on the right way. Yeah, I'm just gonna look at something here. So now we come to the fun task of tightening up the main crank nut here. So, this trick has been around forever, but I'm actually going to use an aluminum. So this is an aluminum nail. you got to be very careful using steel because you'll mar up your teeth. I'm going to use an aluminum nail, and I'm going to stick the aluminum nail in here. And it is going to bind up against the main drive gear on the clutch basket, and it is going to prevent this from turning. So this requires 58 foot-pounds, according to the book. So which is uh, it's going to be quite fun because this is this is now like a little greasy football. I'm going to put the little aluminum nail in here. Shoot. So how do you know if a nail is aluminum? It is non-magnetic. See? Non-magnetic. Not magnetic to the magnet. Okay, I just bound up. Is stopping it from turning. We're gonna tighten this baby up. 58 foot pounds. Seems like an awful lot, but you really don't want this one coming off. <clears throat> Holy shit. Oh, okay, there we go. Click, okay. Done. Yeah, kind of bent that a little bit. Take her out. Looking good. Everything still in turn and moves. Yep, that popped out. That's okay. I wonder what the heck was going on there. Why that felt so tight. Yeah, here we go. Ready for the cover. Hey, time for the side cover. So in the side cover, you have your water pump here, which the gears, you know, kind of gross looking, but should be fine. 
Um, new seals. It had a new water pump seal, so that's all been put in. And then we have our exhaust governor here. Uh, this opens and closes the exhaust port. So we are going to find the gasket. We're going to drop her back into place. Me, that is this big bad boy right over here. Put gaskets on dry. Do not put anything on them. No Yamabon, no anything. Put your gaskets on dry. That way the next guy that goes and takes this apart, he's not cursing and swearing at you because he has to scrape all the gasket surface off. And then there's this O-ring. Now, O-ring here goes over here and this is where your coolant comes in and I'm going to put a little bit of Honda Bond on this too. Uh, this is the one place I don't want this to leak. This stuff here, don't need much. This stuff is amazing. A little tab will do you if you can get it out of the tube. So just a little bit, and I dropped her in there, and now we're going to put the cover on. This is the side cover. So new seals, put a little bit of juice on there, a little bit of lube on the seal, and I put a little, little lube on the bearings that are in here, and the studs, drop the cover back into place here. Should not need a hammer, this should just go on nice and easy. Just like that. Okay, now I gotta find all the bolts to put that on there. Okay, cover, side cover bolts are on and torqued to factory, factory spec. Um, actually, I'd take it all apart again. Something wasn't lining up right. And something just didn't seem right and in the end I discovered it was supposed to be like that and put it all back together again mm. okay so we're just about done this side now the clutch cover goes on so just like everything else new seals I have replaced this seal already Or did I? Maybe I didn't. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. Because this is not the same size. Alright. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What the heck I'm doing here? Yes, I replaced that seal already. Because, you know, I like doing things twice. Okay, so, cover goes on. Inspection window is nice and clean. So you can see the nice and clean. Nice and clean oil on the bottom. And, oh, should be a gasket for that. Big, thick one. Uh, let's see here. Wrong side. <laughs> this one here. Like that. No sealer or silicone. Let the gasket do the work. This is done. We'll put the screws in and we torque them to factory spec. Just like every other nut and bolt on this engine, remember these are tiny little 8 mils and they go into aluminum thread. So just a little bit, that's all you need.
I run them in with the impact, I will not tighten them with the impact. Now we go around just like everything else. Torque 2 factory spec. Star pattern. And I would say the clutch side is done. Now oh, I'd love to see if I can get that. Before I get too far here, I want to see if I can get that clutch to disengage here. Get the big bad boys out. Give her a test shot. Oh yeah, here we go. See that right there is an example of why I like to test things. I had that, that was flipped backwards. So now, see, we can test that clutch. Good clutch action, feels good. Not too tight, not too loose. Yeah, it looks good. Right on, right on, on to the other side. Side's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna say the uh, the clutch side is probably the more challenging side to do, and this side is like pretty much done already. I mean, we gotta put the stator plate on, the magneto stator plate on, and then we gotta put the flywheel on, torque it all down, and we're done on this side. Pretty pretty simple steps. Very easy. So we got the stator plate here. Here's a stator plate, it's pretty self-explanatory how these go in here. As you can see, it's got the little rubber nub. Well, the rubber nub is gonna go right into here. Lock that rubber nub into place. Now we gotta talk about timing. We can advance the timing, or we can turn the timing back. So, the engine is gonna spin this way. It's gonna spin counterclockwise. So if we turn the plate this way, we are going to retard the timing. If we turn it this way, we're going to advance it. So I'm going to bring it right up to full advance. We're going to go to three degrees, so it's going to be hard for you to see. Hi. Hi. We're going to, I'm going to zoom you right, get you right down in here. Point this out. I'm making a video, Missy. So I am. You do have to be quiet. So let's see if I can get you right in there. You see, if you look right here, you can see there's a line right there, and if you look really closely, there's three notches, and you see how you can turn that? So that would be like factory timing, so we're going to turn it, and you can see by like the witness marks is where the screw lived before, the screw lived right at the very top of the slot. So I'm going to advance it a little bit. And what this means is your flame front is going to happen sooner. You're going to get more power out of it, but that also means you can't run cheap. 87 octane gas. So we're going to go full advance. We're going to go three degrees advanced. So I believe each of those marks should be roughly a degree or maybe two. So maybe it's more than that. So we'll actually we'll put it right in the middle. Right in the middle. And we'll call that, we'll call that good. And we'll see how this engine runs. If it's pinging and banging and knocking, we'll shut her down and we will put that, we'll readjust that timing back again. But looking at the witness marks, it looked like it was fully retarded before. Advanced retarded. And I think that'll be good right where it is. So now we're to the controversial spot. Some people like to Loctite these. I don't like to Loctite. It's the controversial spot. Do you Loctite these? I don't. Because you're going. it's going into an aluminum case. Um, I Loctited the ones on my Banshee, and I don't think I'll ever get that apart again without pulling thread. So I will never, and you know, it's it's not like it's going to move. I mean, get her nice and snug. It is 
Phillips style. It is, however, a JIC, and I do not have any JIC uh, screwdrivers, but a nice big fat Phillips will work just fine. So I got some big ones here. Stick her in there, just give her a night snugging up. And once again, right, it's steel threads, aluminum threads with the steel bolt, so you don't want to go, you don't want to go too crazy. Okay, flywheel time. Um, flywheel's pretty dirty. I'm gonna spend some time cleaning her up. I don't think you need to watch that. So before the flywheel goes on, we gotta put the little keyway in there. So I'm just gonna drop that little keyway in there. So then the flywheel goes on. Oh, this is my least favorite part because everything's so magnetic in here. Okay, let's try this again. Get her right on that. Get her right in there. See if we can just suck her right in. Nope. <laughs> oh. Okay, you know what? I'm going to put a little bit of Dava. Maybe some grease on the keyway so it stays. Little dab of grease on the keyway should keep her right where we need it. And I like to put a little, little dab of, little dab of oil here. So next time you go take this off, you can. Oh. Oh, I wish I could curse and swear. and then swear later I finally was able to get that on there I do uh, throw something across the room <laughs> okay so uh, one more gasket and one more cover and should be should be a bottom end completion so there's the gasket now I gotta find the cover found the cover cleaned it all up Put the gasket on the cover, and we'll put her back like that. And find some nuts and bolts. And there it is, all on there, all tight. Uh, one final piece that we can put in here is for the output shaft. So here's the output shaft. Then there's a ring here that goes on the output shaft and it's for that seal. This ring is looking pretty nasty. So I'm gonna actually try to put it in backwards, but if it leaks and wipes the seal out, then we're gonna have to replace this, this piece here. So I'm just gonna lube her up, put her on there, see if we can just twist her and put her, push her home. I think she's home just like that. All right, Dad. I believe that is a completed bottom end. That's looking pretty good. Okay. Okay. Next, we'll put the uh, cylinder on. Okay. I wanted to point something out here, and I wanted to get it in really close. And you can see I only put that Honda bond on one half of the case, and you see because these are two machine surfaces, it just squished out. So if you overdo it with that stuff, it's going to squish out everywhere and it's going to be no good. So like this here, you want to make sure you get that out of the intake because this is where your reeds go. It's right in here. Some some places it's important to put this on the bond. Some places it's not. Uh, some people believe not even putting anything on this case house. Maybe a bit of oil and slapping her back together because they are a machine pair. It is machined very flat because if you have this leak, it's no good and oh oh so nice 
Oh, this bike is going to rip when it's all done. Yeah, you can even see right here, I even got some of that stuff on the crank. Yuck. We'll just scrape that off of there. Like a so. Yeah. Yeah, this bike's going to be pretty wicked. Okay. Piston cylinder. That's what's next. So I think this video is going to be pretty long. So far, I'm going to leave this one here. And we'll call this end of the part one. Bottom end assembly. All done. Everything looks good, it's clean, it's tight. Uh, the timing is all set. Uh, engine's looking really good. Um, yeah, I'm, this will be pretty uh, pretty wicked to get this thing running. Okay, I'm gonna end this one here. All right. Bottom end assembly, one, done, check.